So I have Churchill Ogutu, he's IC Group uh, Asset Manager uh, Economist. He's in the Asset Management uh, Portfolio Org uh, Department of the IC Group. Uh, thank you for joining us. He's no stranger in terms of matters economy. And just tell us to put things into context. We're now, I believe, at 148 to the dollar, the Kenya shilling that is. Since the beginning of the year, how far has this uh, come in terms of the drop and how significant is this in your reading? Yeah, thanks, Mark, for having me. Uh, so when we started the year, the shilling to the dollar was 124 units uh, to the dollar. Right now, we are looking at 148 units to the dollar. Mm -hmm. So that means that the shilling has weakened by around 16.7%. This is the first nine months of the current year. So, yes. And if you try to contextualize it, uh, if you look at the period between 2016 to 2021, mm -hmm. the average uh, weakness or the average slide of the Kenya shilling was around 1.6% in any given year. And that is also inclusive of the 7.2%. This 7.2% slide mm -hmm. was in the year 2020. And we all know what happened in the year 2020. COVID, COVID happened. And so there was that weakness in the shilling. So if you exclude that, it means that the shilling has been quite steady between 2016 all the way to 2021. And then last year, the shilling slid by 8.2% uh, from where it began the year to around 123 uh, units to the dollar, so that was around 8.2%. So if we now look at what has happened in the first nine months of the year, 16.7%, it just shows how significant move the shillings, weak, shillings weakness has been over right. the course of this year. And just to separate the issues, because someone might uh, talk about this is the government um, doing and peg it on the current regime. So just to separate it from a political conversation and argument to an econo economic uh, reality check as to what would uh, lead to this uh, situation where the shilling is dipping uh, so sharply, has it anything to do with the current regime? Uh, partly you can say it has to do with the current regime, okay. but in a more positive light in the sense like if you could look at the fundamentals since 2016 all the way, you can say even last year, uh, we can say that the fundamentals, we import our goods and some of our goods and services. Yes. Broadly, Kenya is a net importer country. Yes. And if you look at, uh, we've borrowed externally euro bond syndicated loans. Exactly. And if you look at the shillings performance, it wasn't even matching the kind of what uh, the things that you are seeing from a mac macroeconomic standpoint. Mm -hmm. We've been borrowing externally. We've been our what you call the balance of payment or the current account deficit. So when I talk about the current account deficit, basically just ties in the fact that Kenya is a net importer nation. We keep on importing more than we export. So there's some disequilibrium in yes. that sense. And what needs now to ensure that this is a sort of balance in terms of the balance of payments is that the shillings need to adjust. But that is something that we don't see happening since 2015 or 2016 thereabout. Mm -hmm. So when the new uh, regime came in, and I remember even during the vetting of the current uh, cabinet secretary for Treasury, uh, Professor Njungu Nandungu, mm -hmm. he said that he would like to see a situation whereby these uh, market forces coming in yes. within the foreign exchange market and similarly, when uh, this current CBK governor, this is sometime early this year during his vetting process, he echoed the same sentiments that he would like to see uh, there's a form that the market forces come to place within the foreign exchange market. Remember that the foreign exchange is a market, yeah. like the way you can go to any given market. So this sort of dynamics that apply in other markets need to have applied even in the foreign exchange market. Okay. So with that coming into place, we started seeing that now the shilling is now starting to reflect where it's supposed to have been over the last couple of years that it was not being. So the adjustment that has been there is just basically a catch up to what essentially should have been the case over the last couple of years. Okay. Um, you've talked about the significant dip. Beginning of the year, about 124, 123 to yeah. the dollar. Yeah. And now we're at 148. 148 yeah. And even some people are saying we're getting to 160 very soon. 
yeah. uh, God forbid. Uh, but with that change over the nine months, what have you seen and what is the effect and impact to Kenyan businesses? Yeah, and uh, probably I may just step back and we say that uh, what you've seen from the 123 to 148, this is now the official rate, dollar official yes. effects rate here. Yes, yes. But if a small guy goes to their bank and then they want to sell dollars, they want to buy dollars, I mean, the rate they get might be slightly higher than that. Yeah. So that's just to contextualize to our yes. viewers or our listeners. Because that's 48 is what, 148 is what you'll see in the CBK. CBK, yes. Right. The right. Bloomberg also for right. people who look at the markets. But that's not the official FX rate here. But it, it's a bit different from the retail FX rate here. It basically, for ground view to need to fall. Exactly, true. exactly, yeah. 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 Things are a bit different here. Yeah. Yeah. So you've con contextualized that. So contextualize what impact this would have in Kenyan businesses, on Kenyan businesses, okay, this change. Yeah, so one is that uh, we are a net important nation as a country. We rely on importing some of the industrial products. I think if we try to break down our import goods, 38%, uh, 34% of that is now the industrial products. But okay. basically, uh, if you can think, if I take you back five, six years back, yeah. when we had the big SGR pro uh, project, so we could have, we were importing those projects, uh, those products into the country. So that's one. The other one, which is a bit significant, is now fuel and lubricants, which is around 22% of our imports mm -hmm. as of the month of July, and so on and so forth. So Kenya is a net importer nation, and some of these goods, uh, some of them are intermediate, mm -hmm. whereby uh, manufacturers, they rely on these goods so that they can be able to be a part of their man they are part of their manufacturing processes mm -hmm. uh, others are now end products uh, things like oil we import and we consume it locally as an end product we don't really take them to manufacturers to refine them or something like that so uh, but pretty much that's about it but now the impact is uh, basically rather than buying them for one unit of a dollar at 123 at the beginning of the year you are now, we are now spending more shillings to buy a unit of dollars. So right now, 148. Official rate, I mean, it depends with uh, where you're buying uh, or as a client. Probably you can get it at a slightly subsidized rate, mm -hmm. but we are talking about the official rate, 148. So more units to mm -hmm. buy the same unit of dollar that you are doing at, uh, that you're buying at the beginning of the year. Yeah. The other thing which is also more importantly is that it's not even the decline or the performance of the Kenya shilling to the, <coughs> to the dollar, mm -hmm. but it's also the availability. Uh, we had anecdotal evidence to the extent that some of the people who, will, who were seeking dollars, rather than having dollars, say, in a, con in, a, in a considerable time frame, say, within three days, you go to your bank, yeah. you're seeking a big amount of dollars, you're told, okay, you hang, a, hang on a minute or it will be executed within weeks or even months for some people. And those are the things which, if you try to look at the bigger picture, that is the negative impact that we are seeing, even in the performance of the shilling, because one, there's no availability of the dollars in the market for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And that also means that for potential offshore business or foreign business who will want to set up their base in Kenya, yeah. or for businesses which have to repatriate their dollars to their <clears throat> parent company or all that, yeah. they're facing difficulties. And that has a negative ripple impact even to the businesses. So would you say, because you said it's documented in some aspects in terms of the shortage, was that um, cosmetic or was it actual, deliberate and choreographed to keep it away from the market for one reason or other, you know, when you hoard uh, the dollars well, in your reading? Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, what, you dis what you discuss what in your WhatsApp group. They <laughs> <laughs> yes. Data protection is... Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what happened is the time that the dollar shortages was acute was between April last year to say July to August last year. And that's the time mm -hmm. whereby we had the, the Russia-Ukraine had happened, the crisis had happened, gotcha. and then the oil uh, prices had skyrocketed. And then there was a bit of uh, some disequilibrium in the market. 
So as oil marketers will come to the market, definitely they tend to have a signaling effect even to other corporates, mm -hmm. even to other retail players within who are looking at the dollars at that time to access the dollars. So the what we had, the communication, I mean, yeah. we had even the news flow telling us that there was some communique to the effect that banks need to ration their dollars because, I mean, it's like a, everyone is heading to the similar uh, exit door yes. or entry door to get their dollars. So that might have had some negative impact. So probably uh, what happened is now just a, as a way of trying to stem the tide of uh, people just going to demand their dollars at a singular point. So as a way of just trying to manage the situation. But definitely it had its issues just to contextualize it uh, within the banks themselves. Because if you're talking about the larger foreign exchange market, we are talking about from one, there's the Central Bank of Kenya, the regulator, it has its reserves, uh, foreign exchange reserves, and also banks. Uh, banks, they get, uh, they have liability, they have effects both on the asset sides, uh, they dish out loans in hard currencies, and also they have liabilities in the sense that they get deposits from clients in hard currencies. So even from that perspective. But now there needs to be a functional market whereby uh, even amongst the banks themselves, they know at any given point the demand and supply within the banks themselves. So that's the FX interbank market. Yeah. So that wasn't working appropriately. So those are the things that now sort of had a negative ripple impact during that time. And you've spoken about, yes, it could be the choices of the regime. And some have even said it's the previous, not the current and point in case, the central bank. What role uh, have they played in all this? Uh, and I'll give you a chance to have a sip of the coffee. Um, <clears throat> because in the past week, Treasury Cabinet Secretary, and I want to just quote uh, Jogo Nadongo, he blamed the former uh, central bank governor, Patrick Deroge, and he said, we are actually paying the price of misalignment uh, <laughs> that happened in the last five to seven years he told the National Assembly. The most important thing is to accept that there have been policy mistakes. Is this uh, being um, evasive of taking responsibility or is he actually right? No, I think it's spot on. And <clears throat> it's something that also at the beginning of the dis discussion that I touched on, like if you look at the economic landscape, we were at a situation whereby we were importing more than our exports. Mm -hmm. So what we call the current account deficit kept growing larger by larger as years go by. But now the Kenya shillings to the dollar was pretty much stable. If you look at from 2014, uh, when we, uh, just as an example, because I know from 2014, when we first uh, took a euro bond loan, a bond, yes. uh, so the dollar, Shilling to the dollar was 87 units to the dollar. So it Take me back. Eight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's like 10 years ago, yes. nine years ago. And from 87 units to the dollar up until 2020, that's when it came to around 100 units to the dollar. Okay. Despite the fact that there are uh, a number of external pressures in the economy. Mm -hmm. And if you look at other peers in the African continent, in the continent, I mean, we could see that the kind of uh, currency performance in those economies, which are similar, which had the same fundamentals that Kenya had, we saw that the adjustment on their currencies was more aligned to the market forces as compared to what was happening uh, in the Kenyan context. So that is the context that uh, the current uh, cabinet secret secretary was talking about, mm -hmm. that the currency, the, was, it was not aligned to the fundamentals. Okay. And right now, and speaking even to the fact that even from an operational perspective, whereby the interbank foreign exchange market wasn't working. So imagine a situation whereby <clears throat> what normally happens is that if you go to bank A, you want to demand or you want to get dollars from your bank A. Mm. And if the bank, your bank A does not have the dollars to meet your demand, they will go to a bank B to find out if they have the dollars so as to be able to meet your demand. Mm -hmm. 
But in a situation whereby bank A is not able to communicate with bank B or any other bank for that matter, that's where the breakdown of the FX interbank market happened. Mm -hmm. So they, are not, they didn't have visibility. So for bank A, if you go to demand for dollars, I mean, they will now price differently from even bank B or bank yes. C for that matter. So that breakdown of the FX interbank market uh, contributed also to some, the what we call the divergence between the retail FX market and also the official FX market. Yes. So in March this year, we had the restoration of the FX interbank market. So now the banks themselves were able now to come at a similar platform. So if one bank has excess dollar supply, they cannot be able to give other banks who have short dollar supply. And with that, you can come up with some better pricing, which you cannot be able to pass to your clients, customers. So it does not matter if you go to bank A or bank B. So yeah. you can find that there's some convergence in terms of pricing. So that's the import of having an operational FX interbank market. So that has been restored. And also around- To whose credit? To the current regimes. Okay, credit, so would you yeah. say that is Kamal Vuge, the current governor? We can because say- Because I was about to ask, has he done anything to address the decline that you've seen? And a lot of um, politics aside, a lot of positive things to say about his credentials yeah. as a person in that docket. Would you say yeah. that is credit to him with what you've uh, I can say because it was in March, so Tuge came in in June, so we can say that mainly with the new current, uh, the cabinet secretary, yes. that's Professor Njuguna Ndungu. Okay. And obviously he worked with the previous governor, uh, yes. Dr. Njoroge. Yes. And now with the new governor coming in, I mean, he's been sort of implementing it. Yes. But then again, Mark, if you look at, at it this way, you would rather be in a market whereby you, yes, you can get this short pain mm -hmm. point with currency moving from <clears throat> where it was at the beginning of the year, declining by 16 or 17 percent, three, nine months down the line, at least you are there you at least you are comforting that, okay, it's trying to adjust. It's painful, yes, but it's more, it will lead to some gain in the long term. Short term, short, short -term pain, but long term gain in the, in the long term gain mm -hmm. in the future, yeah. So that's the balance. So he may not want to address or trying to stall this kind of weakness. I mean, right now, even from how we are looking at it, it's a one directional move we won't expect that it will now start reverting back to, say, 120 or even 100 or even 87 that was there like nine years ago. <laughs> yes. So, but as it is right now, it is responding to market fundamentals. So it will now lead not even just the Central Bank of Kenya or from a monetary policy perspective, but also from a fiscal perspective. What is the government doing to be able to ensure that our exports <coughs> goes higher? so that we can be able to get the necessary FX inflows in the country so that we can be able to support the, the, the economy. Mm -hmm. What is the government doing? We've been hearing talks about uh, selling of parastatals or state-owned entities. What is the government doing that so that we can be able to ensure that these sales, probably they're done to foreigners, they can be able to give us the foreign exchange. What is the government doing? We had the Ministry of Trade and Investment saying that going forward we'll be getting foreign direct investments in the tune of, wait a minute, $10 billion, which is around 1.4 trillion shillings in any given year. Mm -hmm. That's staggering. Yes. And those are the things that if the policies are put in place that we can now be able to get what we call sticky dollar flows, sticky in the sense that they come in and they don't get out whenever there are these bouts. So those are the things that the governments need to walk the talk so that we can see some more steadiness, some more, at least the currency is starting to adjust in a more durable manner. Another chance for a sip here is I read about a development over the weekend, I, at least I saw it over the weekend, and you can explain whether this should mean anything, whether it has a bearing for uh, Kenyans in the situation of the dollar to the shilling. And um, this is the Pan-Africa Payments and Settlement System as announced by the trade CS Moses Kuria, uh, that 
will impact the reliance on the US dollar for trade. Is this the case or what is it in the first place, the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System? I think uh, just to simplify it uh, is if you're in Kenya, obviously your currency is in Kenya shillings mm. and probably you want to trade with somebody in Ghana, for instance, in West Africa, the Ghana is Ghanaian city. So rather than, so PAPS comes in to ensure that if you pay in Kenya shillings, the guy, your counterparty in Ghana gets it in Ghana cities. So okay. that's pretty much how PAPS comes in okay. to be able to ensure that these seamless payments across the African continent. And if you think about it, uh, let me start, we start some baby steps as we go there. If you're in bank A, and you want to make a payment to Bank B, this, the real-time gross settlement, RTGS, which facilitates that. So you can be able to, when Bank A, somebody invoices you in Bank B, and then you're able to make that payment easily. So a step higher, we also have uh, East Africa payment system in yes. the sense like if you, a bank in Kenya, can be able to make payment to a bank within the East Africa region, so there's that platform that facilitates that. So PAPS is now taking it a level higher okay. now within Africa in the sense that, uh, and also in line with the Africa Free Continental Free Trade Area. So one of the things that was highlighted was the fact that cross-border payments has become an issue. So PAPS is coming in at least to be able to alleviate those kind of issues. Obviously we've had this, this angle that this the dollar is, the dollarization will come in. Yep. I think that has been pretty much been ampli over amplified in the sense okay. like, even if you look at the global trade, Africa still is quite low the, in trade within Africa as a percentage of the global trade is still quite low. So obviously within intra-Africa trade, perhaps kind, kind of makes sense. But if you are looking at trade in Kenya, but you want to trade with somebody outside the continent, I mean, you'll have now to go through the whole SWIFT system and that's where the dollar comes, the dollar in. comes yeah. in. You can. Exactly. So this is more to the benefit of intra-Africa trade exactly, yeah. and not necessarily to counter exactly. the uh, dominance of the dollar. Exactly. Okay. That's how I see it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 